Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity this Wednesday with incredible guest art business consultant, um, Allison Stanfield. She is going to join us soon, hopefully, and she is going to talk about, um, and there she is, she's gonna join us any minute now, and um, you're gonna hear everything that she has to tell us about her programs online, and how she's been helping artists for such a long time. So I'm super excited, Allison, to have you joining us today. Hello. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me okay? It's really weird. I heard you until I got on. I heard you really well. Can you not hear me well? You know what? I think that's my speaker is connected. Hold on one second. Something okay. Happened. okay. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I can entertain people. <laughs> there we go. That there you are. <laughs> yeah, what so, happened? Um, I think that my phone was connected to my speaker. It's never really happened before, so I don't know what happened, but we're here oh. and everything's okay. Is a Bluetooth oh. speaker that happens? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it all oh. of a sudden will start playing in your car. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, where is that noise coming from? It's yeah. not coming from here. So I'm so excited for you to be joining us today. And I, I can't thank you enough for, um, for bringing all your expertise uh, today and sharing uh, with my audience um, who you are and how you have dedicated really your life to help us artists. And so if, if before we start, please tell us your name and a little bit of your background of who you are. So I'm Allison Stanfield. I actually started life as a, an artist. I was a painting major in college but I liked my art history classes better. So I went into art history and got my master's degree. And then I went into museum work where I worked as a curator and educator for 10 years. Wow, that must have been an incredible experience for you. It was good. I wouldn't, um, yeah, it was good. It wasn't what I was meant to do uh, as Oh. <laughs> that, that, that some weird, some spam Glitch. call came through. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after the museum, what happened? So what happened was when you work in museums, you go where the jobs are, right? So if you want to keep going up, as I did in the ranks, you go where the jobs are. And I ended up, I won't badmouth this town, but I ended up in a place where I didn't want to be, where I wasn't really happy. I loved the collection. I loved the, yeah, I loved the collection, let's just say. I loved um, some of the people that I worked with a lot, and then, but I just wasn't happy in that place. And I decided that life was too short and I wanted to live where I wanted to live. And that was in Colorado. And so I sold a lot of my belongings, packed up a U-Haul and moved to Denver. That was 2001. Okay. And yeah. So, so what made you decide, okay, maybe I should go into the business world. <laughs> so, yeah, that which is super funny because to that point, I had also worked in Washington, D.C. for a U.S. senator for a while in between undergrad and graduate school. So my background had been graduate school politics or government, let's just say more government. I wasn't on the political side, but more government and then graduate school and then nonprofits and not only nonprofits in the museum, but also on boards of nonprofits and so forth. So business, not so much. So what happened was when I moved to Colorado, I decided that I wanted to start my own business and was going to be an art consultant. And for those of you who aren't aware, there's a difference between an art consultant and an artist consultant huge vast difference so an art consultant actually buys art for businesses for hotels for um for bank lobbies for wherever they're the middleman 
they are the middleman, yes, or woman, as woman. is mostly the case. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the, so I decided, well, that would be fun. I would love to buy art for people. That would be great. And so I did that for, I started that business in the summer of 2001, and then 9-11 hit. And no, you know, no one really felt, it's kind of like now, it's kind of like COVID. So you, no one felt like talking about selling or buying or anything like that. But I did have a few jobs that came through, through some contacts that I had made in the past and here in Denver. And um, but then what happened was, artists that I had known in my former life found out what I was doing and they were sending me letters because did, they didn't send a lot of emails in those days, but they were sending me letters and they were saying, they're, I don't know what their pitch was. I can't remember. Some of them help, might have been emails. Help, help, <laughs> help, help. Well, actually, no, they, because I was buying art, they wanted me to sell their art, right? They wanted me to use their art for these jobs that I was on. And I realized what a crappy job they were doing at the asking. It was like, hey, I can help you. <laughs> yeah. So then, then it just, it just kind of happened. Um, people asked me for help. And so, yeah, and then the business, Art Biz, it was called Art Biz Coach at the time. It's now Art Biz Success. Art Biz Coach started in the spring of 2002. It and was. let's just make a quick reference that you were saying. So now you're an artist, right? So you artist you, business coach, artist right. business coach. So it's very different from being uh, the middle person versus actually helping the artists. Yeah, you artists. can say I'm an artist consultant. You can't say I'm an art art consultant. Correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and it There's is a big difference. Yeah. Yes, it is a big difference because Huge. you are helping artists to develop and um, come up with the right strategies um, to become uh, a better uh, person to put your work out there and to really talk about your work and know how to do all that, right? Correct. And so um, right now, I know that you have created the Art Career Success Program, which is a one year long um, training for artists. Um, can you talk about that for a little bit? I would love to talk about it. First of all, it's called the Art Career Success System, and that's very important because it is a system. What the reason I called it that, and 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 the reason I feel like it's apt is that I, over the years, I've had many many programs over the years, but over the years, it just it kind of became. I realized that artists are doing the same thing over and over and over again, no matter where they are in their careers, no matter where they are in their businesses, you still have, you have to update your artist statement. You have to approach venues. You have to apply for shows or curate your own shows. You have to create content. So you have to do these things over and over and over. You just do them from a different level. Right. So I created a system that artists could use at any point in their careers. And it's actually it's a little confusing because it's made up of four different classes. So there's um, there's a class called the Art Biz Accelerator that focuses on money. How I actually have uh, something called the Income Accelerator that shows you exactly uh, if you walk through the steps, how the money is going to come in. Because some artists might say, like, hey, I want to make $50,000. And my the coach to me says, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? So this system walks them through that. And then the and then uh, that also includes venues because you need outlets for that, whether it's your own personal venues or someone else's. And then, um, and then there's Magnetic You, which is about... It's about your brand so it's about and this magnetic you is kind of like oh it's where my heart is magnetic you and collector relationship essentials is where my heart is because magnetic you is helping artists find their voice around their art and that comes from my background as a museum curator and educator because in both of those roles i had to interpret art 
for the public. So it, it was either relying on artists' words or interviewing artists, talking to them about the work and translating it for the museum because I understood how powerful that moment of connection was. So people, as I've always said, people don't get a visual education in school. They do not know how to look at art. So as an artist, it's not their fault. As an artist, you, we have to train people how to look at the art. And that's what I do in Magnetic U. Um, and in Magnetic U also, like, um, do you talk about like the importance of, of writing and coming up with you know, yeah. an incredible statement. So your artwork with a few words can come through, which, you know, I read it in also in, in your book that I, I absolutely love. Um, I'd rather be in the studio. Uh, the art is no excuse guide to self promotion. Longest um, title in the world. Yeah. Yes, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay because it has so many amazing uh, points that um, I think they resonate with each one of the um, artists like myself and um, you know you really talk about you know how important it is to use your words um, and to come up with your artist statement which is huge right well it's huge not for other people it's huge for you right more than anything else right um, it's huge for you to be able to articulate that because once you can and it sounds so simple, right? It's, it sounds like, like you should know about that, but it is the hardest thing to do because it's one thing to uh, communicate visually, it's another thing to communicate in writing or orally. And when you go through a very detailed process, like I walk you through in Magnetic U, of writing that statement, and I have you do some things that are uncomfortable, but you go through it, then you have the language that you need to promote your art. And that's just the backbone of all your marketing. Yeah. Okay, so what is the fourth face of the system? Oh, there's, so that after, uh, actually it's a two. The third one is Creative Content Camp. It okay. was created because artists are like, what do I say? What am I supposed to say online? And so it is a whole class to help artists develop content. Okay. Um, to give them hundreds of ideas for content and then to put them in an editorial calendar. And the fourth one, again, where my heart is, is collector relationship essentials because building an art, a successful art career is all about the relationships that you establish and nurture throughout your career. So meaning like keep your connections, keep calling them, keep sending them newsletters, keep connecting with them at some point. Keep or connecting another. with them. What I would, uh, let me, what I would put it as is these people in your life are in your life because they care about you as a person and as an artist, they like your artwork. So keeping it from them is doing them a disservice, it's doing the relationship a disservice. So it's about doing it authentically rather than bombarding people or nagging people or anything like that, but really caring about the people that you come in contact with who, especially those that have asked to hear about your work and those that you want to form relationships with. So not just, you know, not just being satisfied with the group that you have now, but you know, who else Opening do you need up. to know? Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Um, and you also have the Art Biz uh, podcast that I was fortunate enough uh, to be a part of, and we had so much fun. And um, so tell us a little bit about your podcast. Well, the podcast is actually the second iteration of the podcast. And the first one was a long time ago. It was like, I was one of those people that just tried everything in my business. So I had a podcast from 2006 to 2010 and got really bored with it because I was just reading my newsletter and I was really bored. And if I was bored, probably other people were bored, but it's crazy how many people <laughs> listen to that and still do listen to it. Um, and so that was the first iteration that stopped. And then the second iteration began again in 2016. And I am still to this day, letting it be what it wants to be because 
um, started this one thing. And then I thought, here's what I wanted. I want to share artists, not me, but artists who have a business lesson to share. So um, real life examples of business lessons from artists and, and managed to do that. It might, it, might, it might change a little bit. There might be some seasons in there where it changes a little bit, but, um, but I've also done some monologues where like I've written something, I wrote a long post, a long uh, like cornerstone post on my site about becoming, a, making a living as an artist. I always want to say becoming a full-time artist, but it's making a living as an artist. And, and I thought that should be a podcast. People should listen to this also. So sometimes I'll write a long substantial post and turn it into a podcast too. So I kind of just let it be, you know, I don't yeah. want to, I wanna, don't want to be bound to anything yeah, just sure. because that's the way it was. So Allison, what do you define as a successful artist? I love this question. Okay. So a successful artist in my definition is one that shows up in the studio every day. They show up in the studio every day. They challenge themselves. That challenge has to be there. If you're just painting what you're, teacher taught you, if you're just, you know, going through the motions every day, but successful artists challenge themselves. That's what art is all about. It's always about um, evolving, pushing the envelope, testing things. And so many artists will define success by, you know, I got in this museum show, I got in this museum collection, I had this solo show, but then what? right? Then, then what? Then the next thing. I made this much money. Okay, then you up it. And that's fine. And to, we always have to have those goals. But really, success is much simpler. And it can only be defined by the artist. I can't define it. Except I do say, you got to show up in the studio. If you're not making art, you're not an artist. Right. I, I love that. And I love what you said. I mean, success is really what you make it your success, your own success and putting yourself, you know, in, in out of your comfort zone and pushing yourself. It really, really helps um, to get to, like you said, sometimes it gets to the uncomfortable part of it. Like you talked about, um, sometimes you give exercises that are not fun. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes coming to your studio can be challenging and not fun, but as, at least you're showing up and you're doing the work. The studio should be challenging. Now, I, I said I was started out as a painting major. I took all the studio classes and I know how hard they are. Um, art essentially, and I can't remember if someone said this or if I heard it on a podcast somewhere, but I thoroughly believe that art is about solving problems. So great art um, and it uh, puts a, a question out there and then solves it with it, like it attempts to solve it. And so if you're not doing that, you're not evolving as an artist. Yeah, I, I actually, I love that. So, um, and it's great. And you know, you do, you evolve, you learn, you, you know, you not necessarily you're going to uh, look back at 15 years ago and have the same painting that you did 15 years ago. Hopefully you have changed and evolved and, and moved on. God, right? I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. yeah. I look at some of the things that I did 15 years ago and some of the classes that I taught and the workshop that I did and I go, oh, those poor people. <laughs> right. Those you poor know, people. <laughs> Can I try again? Can I please try again? I can give you better stuff now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, another question that I have for you is, what is the most important question that an artist can ask you? As so a, yeah. I have to like I have to tell on you. You gave me a couple, a few questions ahead of time, and I picked this one out. But I'm totally gonna turn like turn ranks on you right now, okay. because you can. That question assumes that I have the answers just right there, right? But I believe that you artists have so many answers inside of you and that a better thing to do would be to ask yourselves questions. So I have 
three pages of questions you can ask yourself. We're not going to go through them all right now, um, but, <laughs> but I can give you a link to them. Um, when, when I was do, doing some live workshops, we did this exercise that I had artists like put a goal down and then they had to come up with like 20 questions about that goal. And I think this is really important because we can find answers so quickly right now. You told me also that people are telling you they're looking for information. Google it. It's all out there. Everything is Googleable, as they say. Everything yeah. is out there. <laughs> but it's harder when you really want to. Like, so if you just ask me a question and I give you an answer, what do you learn by that? That's so surface, right? That's so surface. It doesn't help you go Bro. further yeah. and so really sitting down and asking yourselves um you know it, you know if this is my goal what are all these questions about it? and i can give you some examples if you want or yes please you we would you love me some examples. give you some yes. examples yes okay so let me let me ask you this you have your choice of categories for questions i have a bunch of categories when you'd rather not market when sales are slow when you're too much in your head, when, too when you're too busy, when you're overwhelmed, when you're not making art, what category do you want? Um, when you're not making art. When you're not making art. Um, you can ask yourself, why am I not inspired? What can I do about it? What am I prioritizing above my art? And is it right to do so? Because it might be right to prioritize something today. And then one year today, will I be happy that I chose to spend my time in other ways? So uh, <laughs> someone just said all of the above. I was <laughs> going to say all of the above myself, but then I figured you wanted more specific. So um Keep going, Allison. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, some of the, let me say, oh, that was the list for that. But the, why do I, um, like when sales are slow, when sales are slow or not at all, <laughs> where, where am I not making my best effort? Where have I been inconsistent? That, that could be in the marketing or in the artwork itself. Where have I been inconsistent? Have I outgrown this sales venue? Has my work, how has my work changed? Is it bigger, you know, different colors? How has it changed so that it's no longer selling? Um, am I following up on potential sales? And then um, and then let me just say that at the end of all of this, when you come up with a question, the next question is always a why question. So Charles Duhigg, who wrote the book Smarter, Faster, Better, he also wrote a book about habits, but he wrote the book Smaller, Fa uh, Smarter, Faster, Better, Better, Smarter, well, something like that. <laughs> um, and it is so good. He says, true meaning comes when we ask the why questions when we so i always say like the next question is why you know okay if this is the answer then why is it the answer um and i so there's here's some other questions that you can ask um what can i change where do i need to hustle where do i need to create space because sometimes we're just so busy that we don't we're not able to see big picture we're not able to plan you know we're just sometimes my day goes by and i'm like this was a crappy, unproductive day. I did a lot of things, but I didn't do what I really wanted to. I know everyone on this call can relate. Yes. Um, how, can, <laughs> how can I challenge myself? That goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Here's a good one. Who do I need to introduce myself to? Yeah, I think that is a great one, actually, because I think that, and I, and I talked about this on, on the podcast, because you asked me, how are you reaching all these people, right? And I said, well, I'm just asking. So yeah. if you don't put yourself out there and if you don't make that, you know, that push forward, no one will do it for you. Yeah. So yeah. it's very important that, you know, you take that first action and you go for it. And you might, you know, say, no, this is not going to happen or thank you so much, but we're not taking, you know, art 
artist right now or you know you're probably gonna be on a no a lot of the times yeah. but you have a thick skin you can you can do it you can keep going and you, finally you're gonna find someone that is gonna say yes yeah yeah you are a great example of that because you knew you wanted to do something you didn't know you didn't worry about how it was going to be done you're just like let's go forward with it when that shows the commitment and when you have that commitment then you'll figure out the how part is easy you'll figure it out yes yes you, it's, and it's googleable it's googleable and like i said to you like i wasn't tech savvy i had to learn at nights i was you know doing things that i've never done in my life but i'm like i'm just gonna do it i'm gonna figure it out how but i'm gonna yeah. do it yeah that's that's great yeah it's, it's a really good example. Um, here's, some, here's some questions for the times. This is actually something like if we were coaching together, I would, I would ask this of you. So, um, so you should ask this of me. This is one okay. of those questions you should ask of me. It's what do I already know that will serve me? Like what skills do I already have that I can use in this moment? because it is a moment. We are having a moment. And then how can sure. I leverage what I've already created? Like, why do I, I, you don't need to keep reinventing the wheel. You've probably created a lot. How can you leverage it? How can you, uh, how can you use it to benefit your art business, your dreams, your vision, your goals? I think that that is so, um, so great because we can go back and look at everything that we've done and we say okay this was successful how is this successful what happened then what was my frame of of, of thought at mm -hmm. that time and um and use it as a, almost like a dictionary or encyclopedia of your own life and inform yourself on how to move forward again yeah one of my former coaches had uh, introduced us to an exercise that we use after every single event program that we do every single timed event that has an end date <laughs> let's say and it is a series of questions what went right what went wrong what would i do differently i think there's one more question but those are the big ones what would i do differently next time and we have, so like after we used to have big three day events and then we would sit down and we would write these questions. So next year we had that to go on um, and to make it better next year. And we always, you know, we're not growing if we're not improving or we're not. Right. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I know that, you know, we kind of touched as a little bit on um, being organized and having a routine down and knowing what you're gonna do the day before you're gonna start. So that takes a little bit um, the pressure off on the day off. So um, if you know what you're doing the next day, um, it really, you can sleep better that night or if you have you know, a pad and a pencil next to your bed and you just write down everything that you have in your head um, the night before, then all those thoughts go away and you can have a better night's sleep and then you'll be fresh in the morning and you know what to do. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's not, in, that I think comes from my book. Does that come from my book? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've done it myself and I, I love it because I think that it is so powerful to have a routine, and especially now that we are living in such uncertain times and we have no control of what's happening we can take control of ourselves and one of the ways that i have found that it helps me is to have this routine absolutely absolutely and routine is uh, the routine that you're talking about is actually planning the next day. So yeah. the next day isn't routine. It looks different every day, but it's the practice. I'm going to call it a practice of planning the next day. And I didn't make this up. I just kind of made it up for artists. I just kind of packaged it for artists nicely. Um, but it is, I know this because there are days that I don't do that, that I don't, Look at my next day calendar. If your next day calendar is blank, if my next day calendar is blank, I just do a happy dance. That's like the, the biggest gift ever because then I know I can work on big projects. But if it's, you know, if it's 
full of, as it has been the last few days of call after call after call spread out a little bit, then I know that, um, sorry, just a second. <laughs> All these, I didn't stop notifications. Um, then I know that um, I can't do anything big. Like I can't work in big chunks of time. I have to have smaller projects to fit in there. Um, yeah. But I used to teach a course called Get Organized that was then called Organize Your Art Business. I taught it for years. And the funny thing about it, the two funny things about it was people took it over and over and over and over again. And then the other funny thing is- Why do you think that? Why do you think that people- Because they get over? disorganized. They get organized and then they get disorganized. <laughs> and I mean, we all do it. But, and it was the same content every time. But, but there's one thing when you- try to do it yourself. There's another thing when you have the group energy around you to do it and everyone's working on toward the same thing. And that's what I find in the art career success system also to have yeah. those same committed artists working with you alongside you is hugely helpful. But the second funny thing that happened with that class is the minute people signed up, we often had early registration, you know, like a month out in those days. Uh, people started getting organized way before class started. Right. Right. <laughs> they pay the money and then they start cleaning out the closets and everything. Um, every single time. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was cute. It was really funny. <laughs> and and you, you really emphasize on the no excuse. Um, yeah. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's kind of a hard thing to say. There's difference between reasons and excuses. There are real reasons why you can't do something. You're sick. You're someone, a member of your family is ill or has passed away or um, as happens to me, my, a cat, it, um, is, a, a cat dies. I mean, I write me off for two weeks when that happens. And there's just, there's reason you need a break. There's reasons that you don't get something done. But when you're continuing to use those reasons over and over and over and over again, it, they become excuses. And one thing, uh, one of the books that I read when I first started my business that became kind of a Bible was Jack Canfield's The Success Principles. Um, Jack Canfield, for those of you who don't know, it was one of the co-founders of Chicken Soup for the Soul, yes. Chicken Soup for Everything. Uh, books and this this success principles book was just you know every principle was like two three four pages long they weren't long so you could just pick it up and put it down still on my shelf I loaned it out once I got it right back <laughs> but it is I was like you gotta get you gotta be careful with this one um one of his big things is taking 100 percent responsibility for your actions and I have witnessed repeatedly artists who won't do that, who blame others for their lack of success, who, you know, who get, who are, who talk bad about other artists because they're doing well and, and, you know, this and that. Um, but they refuse to accept the responsibility for what they are or not, are not doing. It's usually what they're not doing. Uh, so I think once you agree, and actually anyone in my program ha has a form to sign that says I take 100% responsibility, because my courses are on demand. So it is really, I mean, it's always up to, I can give you the information, but if you don't do anything with that, if you don't start implementing, right. it's not going to do any good. Right. So I cannot, I cannot give you a, re a refund, I cannot uh, come and hold your hand for you. At some point, if you want a business, if you want to be that successful artist, you have to set aside the excuses and take that 100% responsibility and get to work. So um, now that with, um, you know, with, with COVID and everything that we are living in right now, um, do you find yourself um, being bombarded again by artists on 
how to move forward? Are you um, helping online? Um, are you doing uh, courses or classes or, um, you know, anything that are helping people at home? So, yeah, so it's interesting. I'm, my business hasn't changed all that much because it was because I was always online. I've been doing Zoom calls for more than five years. So it's always been part of my model before that we were on the telephone in groups. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it is it is not my business model hasn't changed. Um, I shouldn't say that the business model has changed. The offerings have only been added to. So when COVID hit, hang on, I'm gonna get a sip of water just real quick. Yeah, and I'm, I, you know, I think I'm gonna turn off the comments and I'll turn them on again at the end because then I can see you. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when COVID hit, I, my word for the year is lead, and it. It stuck with me like a word for the year, like no other word has ever stuck with me. Well, one other word, clarity, stuck with me one year. But th this really, so I thought, okay, that's my word for the year. What do I do now? How do I lead now? And so immediately, I think April 1st, April 1st, we had a summit for teaching online for artists. It's the Teaching Art Online Summit. <laughs> and we had six, seven of us going through different platforms, showing artists what was available for them to get their courses on up. Then in May, we did, I did a workshop with Gigi Rosenberg for introducing yourself online, like how to make a better online presentation. Um, and then now, because I did the Teaching Art Online Summit, uh, artists are putting their classes online but they don't know how to write sales pages. So I would go to these artists, uh, there were these pages where artists were trying to enroll people in their courses. I'm like, oh no, they're missing so much. I need to teach artists how to write sales pages. And I'd actually done that with private clients before, but I had put together a workshop that's July 23rd and 24th for writing sales pages. And that's if you amazing. go- yeah, if you go to artbiznow.com, you'll see a link for that. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying to adapt. What I was going to say is I had I had these workshops planned in, I was going to, I don't even remember where I was going, in, oh, uh, Vancouver, Washington, and then Detroit, and then Maine, Rockland, Maine. And I had these workshops planned, and I was about to book some more, and then... COVID hit. I was really lucky that they didn't have hotel contracts because I've had a lot of hotel contracts in the past number of years. And it was just such a blessing that I didn't have those. Um, so it was pretty easy to pivot, cancel those. Although I'll tell you that first one. But are you continuing on Zoom with those or not? Not yet because okay. they were super interactive. My workshops are always interactive in person. But I am adapting them and going to figure out how to do it. They were marketing plan workshops. So I was going in and walking through these artists, uh, walking them through a process where they left with a marketing plan. And so, and to do that, they need to work with each other. And you can do that in Zoom, like breakout sessions. I can do that with people, but it, um, I hadn't got to the point where I, needed or wanted to do that yet. So maybe in the future that'll happen. So um, let's go a little, little bit into um, what do you think is the best strategy for artists to show their work on social media? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> the be you mean what platform to use? Or? Well, all of it, I guess. Okay, here's this, here's, Here's my number one advice. Be an artist. That's, that is, quit showing pictures of your food, of your, you know, maybe you could do that in your stories or quit showing, you, you know, 
your walk all the time, unless that is what you're going to paint. I want to see your art. That's the reason that I'm following you. Uh, if you're showing me pictures of your grandkids all the time, I'm not going to go back to your page. Sorry. Right. Right. Uh, your grandkid is cute to you and the rest of your family. Not me. Unless you made the outfit that they're wearing. <laughs> or they're in front of your painting. It's like my cat, right? Right. So <laughs> in front of your painting. Now, having said that, you need to be a person and you need to you need to show those things from time to time that you're human and that you have this full life and so forth. And that's fine. If every, if I go to your Instagram feed or your Facebook page and it's all political stuff, that's not the reason that I followed you. If it's all, um, family related, it's not yeah, right, even your right. personal profile. But even if you have, let's say that, you know, you do have a very professional looking, um, page, um, how much is too much or not? Are we talking about Facebook or Instagram? Let's say Instagram. If you do stories and if you do up, you know, feeds that come out, you know, twice a day or, you know, what is it? Is it anything too much or it's what is too, too much little? for you? But not for the viewer. Now, here's what I here's what I think about that. If people see everything that you post, they need to get a life. <laughs> Right? right, right. If they're annoyed by your post, they need to go do something else. So yeah. I don't believe that you, I mean, obviously, if you posted five times, six times a day, but even then, if I really like your work, I'm gonna like, and I like you, I want to see what you're doing. So it kind of depends on the post. And, and do you prefer one platform over another or not really? You mean Instagram over Facebook or? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd much rather be on, I'm hardly ever on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think it's because my clients are on Instagram and so that's where I want to be. And, and I find it a more, it's harder for me because it's so visual and I don't have a visual product. But so I take a lot of selfies and those seem to be where I get the most engagement because I am my brand kind of. And so Funny, it's harder for I me. Have for... Found, I have found that out too. When I, you know, when I post something that I'm in it, I think people like to see who's behind the paintings or, you know, they want to put the face with, with the work. Yeah. Um, and so it, somehow when you put your, yourself out there in front of your paintings, um, you have that immediate connection. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I do think, uh, I do think the work has to be foremost. I do think that it has to show up in your profile photo because if you're commenting on things, you want people to see your art all the time, but, but you need a, ver a little bit of a variety in there. Yeah. 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 And then um, one more question. Um, you talk about blogging and doing a newsletter. Um, what is the difference between actually blogging and doing a newsletter? Is it the same thing? Is it different? Um, how do you see that? So this is part of content camp. And it's a whole like a whole lesson. But I will tell you that it I don't think it's as confusing as anymore because I've taught so many artists how to combine them. And it was confusing to me for a while because, you know, and artists did this too. They tried to come up with content for the blog and content for the newsletter. And it's just a lot easier when you combine the two. And the thing about the, the newsletter is it's push, right? You push them in the content into people's inboxes. And the blog is there to pull people, to attract people to your website. And nothing attracts people to a website more than a blog if it's updated. <laughs> if it's updated frequently, because it will be the most, that's usually the place where people go first on a website. And that's why if you have a dead blog link, it looks really bad. And just remove it, it rather than have it. If you haven't posted in two years, remove it or take the dates off of your blog. But 
it is, it's really good for keyword research, for if you teach, for making you look like an expert in your area. And go, going back to what we talked about earlier about writing and articulating yes. about your work, it helps you come up with language about your work if you blog. How often, how often should you, you be doing that? You know, it's so funny. I remember my blog started in 2004. Wow. So I know, right? And, and we have just uh, unpublished and redirected hundreds of posts because we used to use the blog like we use social media now. That was before social media, right? So we've just um, unpublished and redirected all of those old posts that were like, I'm giving a workshop in Michigan this week <laughs> <laughs> from 2005, you know? So <laughs> the, um, okay, what was the question? So, so how often you should be blogging? How often you should post? Yeah, so post. I used to post like every day, right? Like, every, like it was social media. And then when I, I actually taught a blogging course for artists and it was, we suggested five times a week. Now I say, like once every week or two would be great if you could do that. If it's a good post, if it's strong, then, and then it would be really good. And then you have that content to share in your newsletter the next right. time. You give a little teaser, you say, click here for the whole thing, and boom, you're leveraging your content. Awesome, so you are really truly combining both. Yeah. So it really helps you, um, you know, connect those two and send them and so, it comes now to how important it is to have your own uh, mailing list and how you have to really work hard to get that mailing list of people that want to hear from you, um, reach out, you know, buy art magazines and look who, you know, just look for emails and, um, you know, add them to your list. No, um, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. That's illegal. Don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't, Don't do, do that. that. <laughs> but, but you can ask them if they want you to be on your list. Them. But yes. it's illegal to put them on your yes, list. Yes, but you can ask them if if they can be a part of it. But I'm saying like really nurture that list because we don't know what social media what's going to happen with social media. Right. Hopefully, we'll always have social media, right? But um, but if for some reason it goes away tomorrow, God willing, it won't. But if it does, you have your mailing list. That's the only thing that you own for your, for your market. I mean, that's, that's the only thing that is truly yours. And so you should be doing everything you can through your social media to get people on your list. Always. You want them on your list because even if social media stays around, the algorithm changes. Maybe, maybe Instagram will let people see this post. Maybe not. It's changing constantly, but if they have said, yes, I want to hear from you. Yeah, I want to see your art more. You should be, you said, you know, get the list, cultivate the list, but use the damn thing. Use the list. Right, right. And that's where you said, if you have a blog and you just have, you know, a page that says blog, but it's not there, take it off. If you're not going to use it, better not even have it on your So website. many of those, I click on them all the time and they'll say like, they're just the default for the whatever platform people are using. And it looks terrible. It looks really unprofessional. So, um, Allison, tell us where we can find you, what's coming up for you. Um, so you can find me at artbizsuccess.com. I really want to plug the art career success system because I believe it's my, it's my signature work. It is a game changer for people who are serious about creating a strong foundation for their business and who also want to be part of a community of artists who are doing the same thing. That's at artcareersuccesssystem.com. It's pretty okay. easy. And then we have this, uh, if you're a teacher, if you teach art online or in person, we have the online summit coming up next week. I need to put the banner on the website. That'll be on the website soon. And it's um, a two-day right? It's, it's a two day. day. It's two. It's short. Like there is an hour each day. I introduce it. You do your homework. And then I review some of the homework the next day and show you how to make better sales pages. 
Great. That sounds amazing. So oh, for anyone who's interested, I'm going to just post everything on my feed. Um, it will be posted at some time with um, Allison as well. And if you guys, I'm going to turn this back on real quick. Um, sorry about that. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can send them to me or to Allison. We'll be happy to answer anything that you have your way. I mean, c coming our way, we'll try to answer it. And um, this was so great, Allison. I can't thank you enough for sharing all your knowledge and your teaching with all of us. And I think we learned so much today. And this it was is what fun. This, I know this is what this platform is all about, right? It was Opening fun. Up and Can I just say, don't hesitate to send me a direct message on Instagram. I'm if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them there. But Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, Randa. Thank you. Um, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, I think we all, you know, we're all taking um, something from today. And, and this is it's just no words to thank you for coming in and trusting me. And um, congratulations on raising $10,000 from the first set uh, for the first sale for doing this and and really kudos um, to all the artists who are contributing to this cause for Feeding America. Thank you for doing this, Sandra. Thank you, Allison. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. And uh, thank you to all my army of artists. And we'll just keep going here. Do it. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.